minute to let you guys flow in and get, you know, get your coffee on or your Coca-Cola or whatever product you use to, you know, just sit down and relax. And of course, we have here Diana Gladney, which is very exciting. Amazing. Pleasure to be here. So let's see if we can get some music going right here, right? So I'm a little bit of um a little bit of a flow. And we got two likes already, so that's good. People are coming in. Funny, like I open Spotify and the first thing that I see is um video simplified podcast. Hey, it's a, it's a, I hear that's a great show. I've heard about it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. This is Dr. Elo. And we have here today, Diana Gladney, content creator extraordinaire. I'm very happy to have her here. Um, I actually, she's the person that I've learned from probably the most. So on content creation. So I am excited to have you here, Diana. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Dr. Elo. It is such an honor to be here back on the BeLive platform. I know, right? <laughs> All right. So here's the welcome to the show. We got here, Sai. Sai is uh, my other part of the Go Create content. So, and Andy. Nice. So, Andy should be here around. So, it'll be nice. So, Sai is watching from Venezuela right now. So, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Love to be in Venezuela. Ooh, yeah. got some pretty big. <laughs> never been, never been. Never something been to add to the list. Something to add to the list. I've always seen Venezuela from the outside. I've been to Colombia. I've been everywhere around, but mm. I haven't been to Venezuela yet. But yeah, you know, next Sunday. And we got our other uh, go create content partner, Techonify, which is Andy from the UK. He's watching the UK. Awesome. All right, so let's jump in from, not from, to get to know our guest. So, Diana Glandy, take it on. Well, uh, my name is Diana Glandy. I'm a native out of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm the youngest of six, and I have, at this point now, I've lost track. I think it's about 19, 20 ish nieces and nephews. I keep losing track, and a great aunt now. So, that's fantastic. You got 56. And saying wow all righty <laughs> i mean you know hey if there's one something to one up on there that's it <laughs> i know right super aunt and uncle right so got started in video content creation some years ago just wanting to uh, share my vision using video and it just uncovered a passion for me and i've now been able to transition into full-time content creation helping entrepreneurs simplify the video creation process so we take different cameras lenses things like this microphone streams like we're going to be getting into today uh, and just helping people to bring their business online in a way where they can share their message using the medium of video because i think it's just the best way to do that oh yeah i love to simplify because mm. I love I love simplifying stuff, you know. And uh, um, there's so many complicated stuff around um, content creation, live streaming, podcast, and you can make yourself basically very miserable. And <laughs> you simplify that really good, and that's why I, I'm a, obviously I'm a fan. Everybody knows that. There's no secret to that. Um, <laughs> I'm in your group as well. Would buy me a coffee. So buy me a coffee sl or slash Diana, and um, she in her podcast and in her videos. Um, she provides a lot of value and as little as time as, you know, possible, right? Give you that <laughs> straight shot and this is what it is. Just do it this way. And it's amazing. I'm, and, and I'm honored to have you here. So, all right. Thank you. Let's jump right in into the question. So, what sparked your interest in content creation? Honestly, I didn't have one in content creation, which would be surprising for where things have grown into. But it really was about solving a problem, my own problem. And I literally was, I only got started with the intent to do the video that my mentor challenged me to do, which was wow. go and make a 60 to 90 second video, post it and do that every few days or so until you get to 30 videos. Well, I say, well, you don't know that I'm the same person that rotates those same seven photos on Facebook you know, it's from the inception of, you know, Facebook, like back in 2006 era. 
And it's like, bet you didn't see this one. It's been about two years since I bought you forgot about this. It's like, so, <laughs> you know, with what walked around the house and all kinds of stuff and outside eventually landed in the car, 90 degree heat with the Whitney Houston lip sweat and just <laughs> it's like made that, that video. And it was just super nerve wracking in the moment. But, you know, I looked back at that video and I was like, you know, it's not that bad. And this is, will probably be all right. And so in doing that video challenge, I ran into so many different things. And of course, seeing other people that were clients of his at the time post better videos. And I'm like, well, why don't my stuff look like that? So, you know, got into the search of just how to make the things better. And at the time, there just was no clear answer for an entrepreneur that wanted to get started in video creation and how to do the basic things of what needed to get done to make a good looking video, mm -hmm. present your message and get back to the business of why you created your company. And so I started to make videos as I found answers because I figured it would be helpful to other people's like, this isn't at the time what the channel is about, but here's how you do X, Y, and Z. Wow. And in a short amount of time, my community responded more favorably to those videos and wanted more of those videos than what I was talking about, which was uh, personal development, just like starting your company from scratch, understanding the basics mm -hmm. of how to create a company. Well, they didn't want to know that as much as they wanted to. And once you get past it, it's like, OK, cool. But nobody wanted to nerd out with the tax stuff as much as I did. <laughs> and I was really had uncovered a, a new passion in like I was already interested in tech, computers and all the things. But now this transitions into video because the more I ran into a problem, the more I would be adamant to solve it. And once I solved it, I wanted to share that so it would help other people. The community wanted more. I wanted to do it more. I found myself being more passionate about that stuff than what I was talking about. And, you know, fast forward, here we are. And I know that's your um, you have some uh, phrase that you say pain points. And that's the, that's exactly what you're concentrating on. It's to, uh, to solve those pain points for your customers. 100%. It's always about addressing the person, the problem, and their pain points. And that's based off of a formulaic process in understanding copywriting, which everything is copywriting, which is writing the words that sell, or even when we're speaking it or communicating that in video or whatever, everything literally boils down to a copywriting formula. And that pastor framework, which is about shepherding, it's an acronym. And so that P that starts is like the cornerstone of anything, which is like, who's the person that you're talking to? What problem are they having? And what are their pain points that you're addressing in whatever it is that you're presenting? So taking that approach, even to the video content process, and you think about why is somebody clicking or searching for something is usually based on a pain point. Bam. Ooh. That's really good. Whip them. <laughs> Whip them. Like it. Whip them with knowledge. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, so we got some good comments in here. I yeah, love your work, Diana. You able to just speak to your content this year. And absolutely love your insight on content creation. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, your setup looks amazing. So, which is they both look amazing. I know that. <laughs> I learned from the best. So. 100%. 100%. <laughs> what, what camera are you using right now? So my stream, streaming setup consists of the Sony a6400 and the Sony 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. Oh, nice. So I'm using um, the CV Elo. It's not the CV10. Okay. We it's will the CV re Elo. The re the, we knew we, we knew they got that branding wrong. The CV Elo. I, I wrote it. I, I wrote on the top of it just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> on the unboxing. I heard that. And a 60 millimeter uh, Sigma lens. That's Sweet. exactly what I'm using. So yeah. I learned all that stuff from this lady right here. So yeah. <laughs> and thank you for the glasses. Yeah. They um if you only knew what happened to this glasses before, I fell on a on a hoverboard. Mm -hmm. I hit my face and I got this mark over here. Yeah. And the glasses never broke. Wow. <laughs> Ray Ban. Ray Ban. <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh God. All right. Well, let's start to how many years have you been? Uh, creating content. This year makes five years of creating video content since 2000. Well, actually, I got started. It would have been November 2007, 2016 is when I got started because I always, even though I started like in February, well, I take back June of 2016. It's like, it yeah. Consistent. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, no, no. I was I still was consistent. That's the crazy thing. It's like I started 
And it started with my phone like everybody else. So that first video, June two, the summer of June 2016. So that would, would, would have been in June. But I really think about like when it comes to mine, I think about November because that's when I first got my first DSLR camera at that time, the Canon T5i. Ooh. So it honestly, it started in June, but I felt like I really committed when I decided to like invest in a camera. Uh, but, you know, for sure it was in 2016, but June 2016, so five years. It's crazy. Five years. It's crazy. Yeah. Time passes pretty fast. Like this past two years, I've been a blimp. Like, mm. Oh my God. You can count how many times you go out and that's how you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, All right. So the next question, what is content creation planning for you? What is your, your unique definition for it? Uh, it always, again, goes back to the addressing a, a pain point specific to a targeted audience. So uh, I love the way that I got the original formula for this is who are you helping with what specifically? And that came from my first mentor uh, when I got started online. So who are you helping with what specifically your content and everything that you do around that content is always still going to be centered around who are you helping with what specifically or to do what specifically so in the content planning it is always about if i'm going to say i'm going to talk about this camera i'm going to talk about this lens or this software or how to do a thing then the planning of that starts at the who am i talking to what problems are they having and how am i going to address this or give them a part where they get to an end result goal that is achieving of that aim and so when i'm thinking about the content planning I want to think about their current and right now pain points and what's frustrating them. Everything starts off with that pain point. I don't care what you're doing or what your industry or niche is like, well, I make comedy videos. How many people have a bad day and they go to YouTube, Netflix, and they quote unquote binge out? Mm -hmm. It's a pain point and they're looking to get that resolved. Or you say, well, I just have a service or a company where we sell a product or a service. Okay. All businesses are based around a pain point, an interest, no matter how many oatmeal companies are out there, people go to certain brands or certain ones. Everybody knows of stuff like Quaker Oats or whatever, because it addresses a pain point I, in the consistency with wanting good oatmeal. That's why nobody really likes steel cut oatmeal. They <laughs> one minute oats, one minute oats for the win. So everything, content planning is always about addressing that pain point and building a process around how I plan to address that in a video. Wow. Yeah. I've never thought about um, like me watching a video, uh, going binge watching because I'm sad or whatever, you know, that I, mm. I, I don't feel good. Wow. <laughs> I mean, even just to like increase, it's not even that you have to start from a negative or it's like, I feel mm -hmm. bad and I want to feel, it's just literally feeling sometimes good and to keep feeling better. So it's just about maintaining that. Sometimes even I think when we detract from certain people or situations or what have you, it's because you have a vibe going and it's mm -hmm. like, you are not gonna mess this vibe up. So I'm gonna go and mm -hmm. have a good time at the barbecue, but I'm going over here. It's not even just because it's, going, it's putting you in a bad mood or you do feel bad, but even like, again, it's like you go and watch your favorite show because you're chasing chasing the emotion and the memories and the feelings that are attributed to that based on feeling good and keep feeling better. So, wow. you know, even when you think about like, I want to watch something for fun. So my thing is anime. I love watching anime. It's not even about that. I'm feeling bad. I just want to keep feeling good and feel continue feeling better. And so it's like, yeah. it's that still the pain point isn't always severe if that's the case. Now, where you got that? Because I, I don't know about you others but i love your reels the funny ones are okay are, 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 yeah. <laughs> the blog therapist oh okay. man Those, <laughs> the, the canon like <laughs> <laughs> so where did you get that from like where, where is just just one day i feel like boom no or you, or you like that at home all the time like you're like no. <laughs> <laughs> i am so, all the time like that <laughs> so the thing is is that you know you always want to think about the intersection between your content and the what it is that you're bringing to the table for the people that that content is supposed to reach. Well, when Reels came out, it was something to where it's like, yeah, I could do the traditional, which we do a lot of in our in our company here, is that the educational clips and things from talks or videos to share a message value or a point. However, 
Mm -hmm. There is something about bringing yourself to camera, which is why I think live streaming is extremely powerful. Well, the reels, I got uh, a lot of inspiration from trending um, video content. I also think about it makes me think about, honestly, a literature class that I had uh, back in eighth grade and Pat Flynn. So how do all these three come together? Because when I'm with my family, for one, the side that people don't see is like, again, I have a ton of nieces and nephews. I'm not super aunt because I give them money's cookie or anything like that, mm-hmm. but because I spend time with them and I'm able to transition into fun time. It's not educational or what it's just literally fun time or creating the environment for it to be fun. It's like, yeah, come over, take over the living room, have fun. But, first vlog showed that, I think. Your first yeah. one or second vlog. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> so yeah, it's like just spending time with them or, you know, cracking jokes, things that we things that maybe wouldn't make sense to record in certain moments, but it's just stuff that we've always done. Okay, well, there's a a humor there. And then also from like eighth grade literature, and I also say like drama club because I was in a thespian society uh, or or am rather, once you're in, you're in for life. So around about eighth grade though, uh, in literature, it was a a part on there where we was thinking about a play, not a play, but a, um, a poem. I believe it's by like Gwendolyn Brooks. But at the time, it was just really about taking inanimate things and giving them personality. Add that into trending content where you see a lot of stuff, like even like one of my favorite ones is where on Family Guy, Peter Griffin is like, they're about to die. And he's like, well, if we're going to go out, then I'm just going to tell you, I don't like the Godfather. And everybody's (laughs) complaining. (laughs) I didn't like the Godfather. And they're like, how? So they have this family argument about Peter not liking The Godfather, never really watching it, but people are taking this on TikTok, Instagram Reels, and switching it to give a version of whatever. So if they're in banking, they're like, I don't keep the receipts at the end of the day. You what? It's like, you're supposed to, I throw them away. It's that that kind of a thing. So when I mix all that stuff together, it's like, okay, what can I show that I usually don't, that maybe is a fun side? What can I bring that's an inanimate object? More or less, it was just the camera stuff. And how can I bring this into the trending stuff? You mix all that together, you get the character that's the vlog therapist and you get the cameras that now have the personalities of the attitudes, not of the brands per se all the time, but of the people. So they can have both, you know, where it's like, oh, the 2959 is not a problem for, you know, whatever recording. (laughs) But if you have, if you're dealing with it, it is. Or the brand is just like, no, it's it's fine. These are these it's fine. So, you know, it's different mm-hmm. things like that. So just <laughs> mixing and matching and just having fun with a lot of that. And honestly, it's just retapping back into, I think, that childlike mentality and creativity of don't take yourself so seriously and have some fun sometimes. So all that stuff mixed together. And it's how you get like the characters of the vlog therapist and personalities of the camera. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. And that sells more probably in that <laughs> the work that we're doing for some <laughs> reason. He would just love that. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, let me take some comments over here. You got, uh, okay, so. Hey, hey, just jump into the live. Welcome, Jason. Looking forward to learning more about content planning. This is the place. That's good. So, content creator question, Diana. What's your approach on content repurposing? I'm a huge, huge proponent of it. We do a tremendous amount of that, but it's not about just sharing a bunch of stuff for the sake of sharing a bunch of stuff. It's really about going back to, because I think most of us and those that are watching this live or on the replay, we're old enough to have that memory of going to the mall on the weekends and specifically going to the food court because you're looking for the samples or Saturday in the grocery store growing up, you're looking as soon as you get back to the meat section or whatever, they got some ground chuck, they got something back there cube steak, something is cooking or somebody's trying to sauce or something. And so you're like, can we go to the grocery store on Saturday, please? I will ride with you. I want to get the samples. Well, same thing. I'm laughing because I know, I know. Yeah, it's, like love you, and <laughs> it's like you are always like, it's like uh, when you're, you're in the cereal aisle or getting flour or something, it's like, can we hurry up, get to the samples before they run out or something? So same concept, especially like in the mall, that little toothpick, the little toothpick now turns into $11.43. And you're like, dang, how much? You spent all this money in the mall. I'm not going to the food court. I'm not going. The little toothpick turns in $11.43. 
same concept with with micro content and repurposing. So it's giving your community not garbage, but a true morsel of something that if they walked away, they are still pleased with what they got. That was a short uh, amount of, of time. They learned something, um, enjoyed something or whatever, and they can move on. Or if they want to go deeper, there's more to more, you know, that's the piece of the piece of the pie. There's a full pie available for you. If you want it, here's where you can go to get it. So I'm a huge proponent of that we do a tremendous amount in my company. That's amazing. That's a, that's a great answer. I'm, I'm like thinking right now, it's like chicken. Yeah, ex- <laughs> ex- like, like, of course. Yeah. General souls, chicken, orange chicken, Ooh, all of orange. that stuff. Oh, it's man. like, yeah, that, that's how that's we've not those little chicken bites. We haven't stopped ordering that stuff when we go to get <laughs> Asian <laughs> cuisine, Chinese food, wherever you like uh, general souls, chicken, please, or beef and broccoli or whatever. It's like they got us hooked mm-hmm. with a toothpick. Want to try? Of yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're stuck. You you always know what that's going to taste like, and you're always going to get it at some point throughout the year, probably. That's amazing. All right. So the next question is uh, most memorable moment while learning content creation. I would have to say it was when I had my Panasonic G85, and I was so pumped. I got that camera. It had 4K. It had unlimited recording. All the focus sucked, but I was willing to accept it and deal with it. I'm like, I can make it work. And so I got so excited. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to record, batch record like four videos. be good for the whole month. You know, whole, sh- whole nine. Well, I am now getting ready to take that memory card and put it into the camera. And not camera, put it into the computer and start editing the first video and offloading the other footage. I put the video in the card and then start playing it just to, you know, go back through it. All you hear is the entire video. Clearly there's something wrong with the headphone port. (laughs) You're not telling me I just spent over an hour. It's like, so I'm like, okay, just go to a different computer. (laughs) I was using a PC at the time. I'm like, nah, let's put it back in the camera. It's like, I'm in true denial here. But what happened was not just the first video, but every last one of those videos, every take, every single take, the audio was jacked because I did not understand about AC adapters and power cables and um, frequency pickup and stuff like all this extra other stuff. And I had an audio cable that crossed over with the AC cable and was just at a long loop, one of those lapels with the super long cables and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Okay. AC adapter is running out. (laughs) Yep. All this, all these, wonderful electronical things that you don't see happening and they're like we don't play well together but it's okay because you don't have uh, a headphone port so (laughs) you'll find out later i was so mad because i'm like i was like okay delete all these videos and the hell with doing content creation (laughs) (laughs) which i was so ready to quit it was so mad i'm like this because you finally get it right and i'm like man so i wound up having to delete it and I was like, I'm going to re-record all of these right now. And I went back and re-recorded all of them. So it was a long recording day. But it just, again, I was just like, I'm not walking out of here with nothing after spending these many. I would never forget that because it's one of those lessons that you learn hard, learn the hard way because yeah. you don't know what you don't know. So that was the most memorable thing for me as far as like in my doing it. Um, if, you know, you want more details on something that, more as a positive, <laughs> like a, something great that happened. You know, yeah, I got a different story for that one. But that you asked most memorable, screwing up the audio. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or more memorable, just, you know, you're supposed to be live for five minutes and then you're on mute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Having a good time, cracking your own jokes, laughing. It's like, oh, you're great. Point at the screen. They're like, we can't hear you. And you're trying to stay focused. It's like, can't hear you. Yeah, exactly. It's like, let me just start over. Welcome back to the stream, everyone. Oh, my God. It's horrible. It happened to me, uh, what, two weeks ago? Here. Man. It was like, yeah, and it wasn't me. It's that Zoom took over my <laughs> <laughs> my my microphone and everything because I had wow. a call before. That's wow. Like, Crazy. All right. So what software do you recommend for content creation planning? Like, uh, there's, there's a bunch of softwares out there, mm. Notion, this and that, whatever. So which one do you recommend to keep us honest with our conservation planning? Honestly, I'm going to go super basic here and be the person that 
doesn't say something like a Trello or a Notion. It mm-hmm. say use Google Notes or Apple Notes, there you go. whatever phone that you have. Because here's the biggest thing. Most people can't keep up with their ideas when they're first getting started. So to introduce you to a software at this point, I believe is illogical because you aren't even going to remember. You don't probably even have your password systems and efficiency set up with the whole process of the what you're doing. So introducing something else, another curve in your learning curve as a whole, is just going too many learning curves equals a circle. So you're just going to start spinning your wheels. I think the first most important thing that you can use for software is the basic. And the reason why I recommend those two specifically, whether it's Google Notes um, or Apple Notes, Apple Notes, I still to this day use both of them is because when you're first getting started, the most important thing for you to do is capture your ideas. Mm -hmm. Most people have fantastic ideas on the toilet, in the tub, driving home from work, on the airplane, boarding the airplane, picking up their kids and they're in the pickup line and all the other weird areas of life where you're like, I have a brilliant idea. I don't know why my brain just started working in this, (laughs) you know, pouring coffee, whatever. But when you have those, because nine out of 10 times, you almost always have your phone. If you leave it at home, you're going to turn around and get it. But you're not going to have that sign in for your stuff with Trello at work. You're not going to have those things, but you will have your basic note software. And the reason why I recommend those is because you can have it on your phone and they auto sync so that you have it on your computer. You almost always are assigned into both and you can always capture them, whether it's audio notes and have that. Uh, even embedded into that note. And then when you get to a point that your competency with a system, like building a whole system, ecosystem around the what you're doing creatively, now we can introduce something like a Trello. At that point, I like uh, using Asana for myself and my team. We use that. And just for the organization of my general ideas, once I take it from a Google Notes, I use monday.com. Now, that may evolve into something that we use as a team, but right now it's not. Uh, We use Asana for all of our our work that we do. But just for general organization of my ideas, I use Monday. But I don't recommend people go that route because, again, too many learning curves equal a circle. Start with what you have and capture your ideas because it does you no good. You can't make a video that you don't remember what the title of it should have been. I love that. You know, when my my ideas is not not even in the bathroom or anything else, my ideas always come whenever I'm up at three in the morning for no reason. <laughs> and bam, I get a bunch of ideas. I grab yep. my cell phone and start just ru- just yep. talking to it on recordings because yep. I know I'm going to babble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it works. It works. And the other thing uh, that I love for that also is Rocketbook. A lot of people don't think about this, Ooh, what, but Rocketbook? Rocketbook is fantastic because even if you're not like a journaling kind of person, it's these kind of a plastic e material but it's not quite but super durable material the reason why i like these is because for those moments when it does make sense to write or draw or sketch something out or whatever you want to do or if you have a planner stuff like that it makes sense to have one of these because you can take a picture of this using the software free software that comes with it transfer that to uh, a dropbox or google drive or whatever you want yep you can you can specify the what and so the thing I used to do when I worked full time is uh, or worked a nine to five job full time is I would take a picture. I didn't have Rocky, but didn't even know anything about it. It may not have been invented at the time, but I would send an email to myself. So I would see that alert when I would get home. But now you can kind of not do the step mm-hmm. by step by step. You literally use a rocket book take a picture, wipe it off and file that to Dropbox or things like that. So I'm huge on using like very basic things, but using them very, very efficiently. That's amazing. That's amazing. I do, I do use Rocketbook. I use it for work. So and, and what I love is that I can just, you know, wipe it off and I yep. have everything already in my computer. Yeah, I don't have to worry 100%. about it. That's amazing. That's great advice. I got uh, a couple of people saying, uh, saying hi, of course, Lady D. Hello, welcome to the show. Deborah Wright, I totally agree. Good sheets too, daily. I use my notes in my Mac too as well. And it's synced to my iPhone, which is, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. And great advice from Andy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, which is amazing. All right, so um, what are some good practices for content creation planning? 
other than the ones that you've said, because you've, you've, yeah, you've covered a bunch. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, some advice. I, I would definitely say you have to get your efficiencies in order. A lot of people think about doing stuff, individual things, or in the reason why it feels overwhelming is because it's like having a bunch of arrows, if you will, these digital arrows coming at you. Well, you think you now need to dodge all of them and dodging one is going to make you run into the other and you won't be able to figure life out. You don't need to do all of that. Like you're overcomplicating things simply because you don't have a system. So when you're becoming a content creator or you're already an entrepreneur and you're getting into content creation, you now need to be thinking about what's a system that I need to build to make this content creation work? Because honestly, it should be fitting into your existing business model so that it amplifies your brand and what you're doing. And if you don't have a business, that's fine. You still need to run your content operation as a business and efficiencies and your workflow and the systems are extremely, extremely important. So if there's one thing that you want to do is you want to understand what in a very basic formulated process, what am I trying to do and what am I trying to achieve and what is the requirement to do that? And sometimes the best way to do that is to ask yourself, what's the easiest way to get this done? And it's mm -hmm. not about cutting corners. It's about understanding that what you are thinking and imagining essentially is the best version of how to do it. When you're starting, you don't necessarily need the best. And sometimes you need to relinquish best in your mind so that you can get it done and allow space and time for things to mature and for things to get an improvement over time. You're trying to start at best and you need to be having a goal of getting better. That's a huge, huge problem with a lot of people because they're constantly stuck, frustrated, unable to move forward because they are trying to initiate at best. You can't do that. You have to start at better. So you have to think of the systems. If you want to create a video, set deadlines. Set deadlines. You have to be at work at a certain time and you can only be late so many times before you get let go or have consequences. Mm -hmm. Most creators don't establish consequences for themselves of what is going to happen if I continue to do the same thing over and over and over, we'll be in 2022 having the same conversation of how do I stay consistent online? You have to set deadlines for yourself and set up the basic process of how can I, when do I sit down to record? When does this need to be edited by? And I would say do it probably right after. So set a plan because you're not going to remember your stuff. You're not going to yeah. remember your mess ups. So don't schedule it a week later. Do it almost right afterwards. And then... You can take the next week or what have you, work on your thumbnails, the other stuff that you need to do. Um, you should have done the research ahead of time before you record it. But now we're in the process of creating and still understanding. So you have your planning, you have your creation, and you have your execution. So that is what you want to do when you get into content creation. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. All right. We have Ash Borland. Hello, hello, hello. Howdy. I love, I love systems and processes. This is real talk. I love that. Simple best. Simple is the best. Fire, fire, fire. Yeah, there's some there's some firebombs here. Ooh, that's some good stuff. This is so good. You need to make it a non-negotiable part of your workflow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard, actually. It's not, it's not unless you're a very organized person outside, like uh uh you have uh the systems thinking in your in your daily, you know, daily things that you do. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do. Now it's coming from from it's very overwhelming coming from not knowing how to do stuff. So I that's, understand. Uh, yeah, I, I and I empathize with the feeling like you have to know how to do everything. You have to accept you suck in the beginning. Like it's just going to happen unless you have a background in design, video editing, production. You right. have somebody that you can rely on that's going to do some of that work, creative work for you, because most of us are having to learn a skill. But the encouraging thing is that all skills are learnable. So there's not anything like it's one thing. Yeah, you get into talent and stuff like that. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about skills. You learn to drive. And there are some people that you like you, you need to have developed that skill a little bit more. Like you see them on the road and you're like, they developed that skill. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your bumper messed up now. You ain't developed that skill. So, <laughs> you know, you see them, you like, yeah, I'm staying away from you because mm -hmm. you have, but you put in the time for it. 
honestly, video creation is no different than anything else. When you wanted to be a parent, you had other people around you or people that could talk to you about it. But once that kid came out, that is your responsibility mm -hmm. and you have to figure it out. Like when they get to the mustard poop phase and it's shooting up the back and I'm like, for me as the aunt, here you go, back to the parent, return to sender. As the parent, I don't know what y'all do. As the aunt, return to sender when it comes to driving. <laughs> and you see a truck coming, you have to make split second decisions. You put yourself in situations that you have to figure it out. And so the reason why you wanna set those hard deadlines, and it, it is true, you do need to set non-negotiables with yourself because if you didn't, like none of us would ever get out of training at a job. We would feel like we're getting out too soon, even though it's like 30 days for most companies you're going through training for, and they put you on the floor. They put you in your position and mm -hmm. you're expected to produce. They set a deadline. You have 30 days and here is the syllabus of things that we're going to go through. It is okay that you're uncomfortable and you don't know what you're doing fully because you don't get into comfort until you get into execution. And that's over time. All these equations over time. And so the thing with being an adult now and getting into this as an entrepreneur or what have you, is that we now don't have to say over time, or we can say, well, I say about three months, I'll give myself 90 days. Oh, really? Why? Mm -hmm. When you're handling a $100,000 plus account on day one, you like, uh, let me put you on a brief hold. I'm having a systems error. Everybody lies, you know, customer service job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, why? what the heck is going on with my bank account? Uh, looks like we're having a system issue. My computer just shut down. It's like, okay, can you come over here and help me? Same thing. Only problem is when you get into content creation, you have to understand that you need to embrace discomfort consistently. Oh man, That's the only that. way that you're going to proceed. You that have to embrace discomfort because if you're constantly trying to start this out and stay comfortable, do the videos or invest in gear just a little bit because you don't want to go too far and stay in comfort. Like you're holding yourself back. That has it, It's really just about limiting beliefs at this point. And so that's the biggest thing that you're fighting. It's not even confusion. It's comfort. Wow. Embrace. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And um, uh, sometimes just people don't, don't, they just think that going into YouTube or doing live stream is just like a, a week. And then the, the week you're going to have like 2,000 followers. Of course, people that's how it works. No. <laughs> of course, that's how it works. No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have 200,000 in three weeks. You're good to go. No worries. <laughs> All right. Uh, Fidelos, welcome. And there we go. I need to hear this. Today, Diana. <laughs> My pleasure. Our pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, we talked about the good practices, right? That's what mm -hmm. the one that we had. So now I want uh, people in the comments to see if you guys have any questions for Miss D. See what any questions that you have. This is the time. And believe me, you will get a, a very good answer. Hopefully, right? Yeah, 100%. We got That's you good. covered. <laughs> Stop, Elo. Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is what we do. We're, we're ready. We're ready. There we go. There we go. Now, I do. Um, let me see. I do. I did had a question like uh, content creation wise, um, starting from scratch, uh, which platform do you believe is the best one to start with? Wherever your people are. The, okay. the, most people look into the research of, again, it's, all, it's always going to be like comfort of that, that creator and entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's a mistake. It has this has nothing to do when you decide you want to get into content creation, unless it is like a purely like a even still with like a family vlog and stuff like that. It's still not even about you because at that point, it's about your family. <laughs> so when you get into content creation, you are stepping into territory that you plan to serve and that this has nothing to do with you. And so if you're getting into this space, you now need to understand that. Like, again, it's, I, I can't really get it. It has nothing to do with you. And because of that, you now need to figure out service. You need to figure out how to serve, like yeah. in content. That's the huge is it's, it's like when you get into this, it has nothing to do about nothing to do with you specifically. And if you want, I can go into more detail about that. Yeah, go for it. Definitely. OK, Ooh. so I'll tell you this. So here's the thing. So we can keep everybody on track. Rephrase your question for me or restate your question. And then I'll dive into that. Okay, so basically, uh, which platform should you start when you're starting to create content, right? Okay, so the platform, again, like I said, it's not about you. 
So where are your people? If you're trying to figure out where to go, most people think where they're comfortable, like a Facebook, even an Instagram. But your audience is going to go someplace maybe opposite of where you think because of their comfort and their needs and actually getting to that answer. Most people may think Instagram or Facebook, it may be LinkedIn and TikTok. And that may not be comfortable because you may not have a presence there. You may not feel comfortable. Or most of the time you have an assumption of what that platform is and how it works without doing any research. This is purely your feelings. And so if you're going to get into creation, you have to get into research. So where you need to be needs to be based on where you can serve your people best and where they prefer to receive content. How do you know where they prefer to receive content? You can literally go to Google and type in Instagram statistic, TikTok, TikTok uh, video statistics or whatever and start taking a gander. Even if you go to social media examiners uh, website there, which I've we've partnered together, we've done like different videos. They have a tremendous, they put reports out every single year about things that are going on in the industry. And they also have on their channel where they are speaking to different industry experts. Well, those experts bring with them what's currently happening. So don't go based off of what you thought or what the news said, literally going to what is the research showing results for? Now, based on that research research and where your people are, how do they prefer to receive their content there? Don't bring YouTube stuff to uh, LinkedIn and TikTok. Don't bring TikTok stuff to YouTube and mm -hmm. Instagram. Bring and fit the culture of the where you're going. So when you're on YouTube, there's certain jargon, language for the culture, like the button, subscribe, whatever kind of a thing, or the next uh, recommended video, the next video, blah, 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 different atmosphere and content. When you bring that Facebook live stream that you just copy and paste to YouTube because you figure I'm going to be on YouTube. No, you're not. You're copying and pasting. Stop being lazy and start making content curated for the platform and how your people would prefer to receive content there because you're going to stick out one of two ways. One, because you address a pain point and an issue and people know they can get their answers from you or because they realize you don't know what the hell you're doing over here. And you just throwing some stuff from Facebook that I already saw because I researched some stuff there, realized that's not where I'm going to find my answers and where I'm going is to YouTube or TikTok or something. Wow. And that that's huge. So you really have to think about where are your people at? Why are they there? And what are they trying to receive there and deliver it? in something that's for that platform. So don't go to TikTok and say, like a do a video, like it's a YouTube. They attention span is mm -hmm. not that on that. The, the culture is not that over there. So you gotta f develop your content for the culture of that con that uh, platform, but for your community of who you're trying to connect with. What are your thoughts on multi-streaming? Like, no, uh, uh, no, no. Okay, and here's why it's a, it's a yes and no. No, because what most people are doing, it is an effort to be lazy without having built a solid audience anywhere. You're just thinking, I'm going to show up everywhere. I'm going to be everywhere, post everywhere. And eventually people will find me. This is that whole field of dreams of if you build it, they will come kind of a deal. It's just like, no, you have to curate it and market it and they will come for, because it's curated for them. And but you need to go again specifically to where they are and how they prefer to receive content. And it's very hard when you're throwing four different parties in four different houses. And it's like you're streaming, like you're on the TV, but it's two people in this house. It's seven people in that house. And it's one person in another house and they can't talk to each other. But, you know, what I'm saying they can communicate with wow. you. So it's weird. It's better to go and build and accept that you're not going to have a tremendous amount of following when you first get started. And that is OK. <laughs> but you can build community and a stronger community because they get used to seeing each other's names. They get used to seeing each other in the chat. They can reply to each other and all kinds of stuff. And they don't have to feel like, where should I go if I want to be with where everybody else is? So it's it's that content isolation early on for what a lot of people are doing. So you have to be very careful with that. And then later on, the answer becomes yes after you build a strong community and following because you have teams that help to make sure that people are in the chat, getting questions answered, stuff is getting filtered. And there is a group of people, maybe even 30 plus in any given space to make sure that that community is well served there. You can't do that when you're first getting started. So it's content isolation early on. Um, so from what most people are thinking about multi-streaming, it's like, no, 
figure out where you're going to be and what you're going to do. And it's fine to do multiple, but there's no way to shortcut work. It just is required. This deserves this. <laughs> what stuff? What stuff? Wow. Thank you very much. Pleasure. All right. So now I do have a question from the audience, which is biggest pitfall to avoid in content creation? Mm, great question. Let's see. The biggest pitfall. Um, it's going to be a couple things. It's various forms of procrastination. And one version of the disease is the buying side where you figure you will keep buying until eventually buy to the point that you are ready. Or it's the research side of the disease that says, uh, especially when it comes to content creation, that it says you're going to research, find all the answers until your brain is absolutely exhausted and has been completely satisfied, and then you'll start. Both of these are delusional ideologies that you need to dismiss at your earliest convenience if you want to proceed and become a content creator because you will never find all of the answers in the same day it's like no 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 i i'm i'm you know when i when i get it i'm, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i've heard that lie so many times like that's like one of the biggest lies i ever hear is like oh yeah i'm gonna do okay can't find them six months later definitely next can't week, find guys, them two months later, two years next week, yeah, guys, I'm yeah ready. exactly no, because it's like, here's the thing. Sometimes the answer that you need, a creator that you, you probably will get to know later on in your journey, hasn't even made that video yet. But if you're waiting constantly for a series of creators to make all of the answers before you get started, you 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 playing around. <laughs> you're playing around with, with not doing it because you figure you're going to research until you figure it out. The other, th the other side of thing is the buying. Well, I want it to look good. I want to be professional. Professional has nothing to do with the camera per se. It helps when it does look good. But guess what happens when you purchase all this gear? You now introduce a learning curve mm -hmm. where you need to figure out how to properly operate, operate this thing. And most people don't have a video or technical background. And so now you fall into the research side because you got to figure it out. Oh, yeah. As soon as I figure it out, I'm going to get so. So that's the biggest problem there is because one way or the other you're finding excuses to just really again get into comfort instead of understanding like most people they don't go back and i don't encourage it either but they don't go back to those early videos <laughs> where it's it's literally i gotta figure this camera out so today's uh vlog that posted on my channel for the being a creator series that was shot on the Sony ZV-E10. The, the uh, what is it? The Z Elo. ZV Elo. ZV Elo. Z -Elo. Yeah. Z -Elo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I shot it on the, <laughs> shot that on the ZV Elo. What most people don't see is that, like, I talk about the camera and stuff, and I say, yeah, we're recording it right now. But they assume because of my experience with other cameras and my profession and what I do with cameras, oh, it's gonna look fine because no, I still for the next thirty days, as I said in that video, this is the camera I'll be using because I have to learn all this course. And I found several things that were off, wrong, or missing in the camera. I don't know that doing two minute, three minute, five minute videos mm. once a week. That I only know work. that from putting a hundred plus hours into using a piece of gear, literally. My nephew asked me yesterday, I was dealing with some family, so he's like, why you got your camera with you? Because I'm using the hell out of it to make sure I know it forwards, backwards, in and yeah. out just because it's the same brand manufacturer and menu system has nothing to do with how it fully operates uh, in use. So, uh, but I don't wait until I figure it out and then I post. Learn and grow and learn and do, which is one of my slogans, like learn and do. You learn something, then go do and execute, execute on that thing. We'll get your merch too. Learn and do. It's that, there you go. Watch <laughs> Diana, so you know. <laughs> That's an amazing answer. Thank you very much. And I apparently, apparently I sold um, Ash's um, question. So okay. <laughs> that. we did go in detail for it, which so, so that's amazing. <laughs> All right. So let me see here. Where can we learn more? And I have a little crawler that says where you can, you can actually learn more. So Instagram, Facebook, Diana Gladney. Mm -hmm. And Twitter, Danny Gladney too. We will not tell you the story of why, but <laughs> there it is. Exactly. And can you explain to us about mastering and 
MasteringMicro.Live, a little bit more about that. Sure. So MasteringMicro.Live is the course that we're currently launching. Uh, it'll be coming out. We'll have the official day one, September 20th. Uh, but that course is about helping entrepreneurs take that pillar content that you're making. Maybe it's a live stream. Maybe it's your talks and things that you're doing or it's your regular YouTube videos and understanding how to not just like get the one and done video. Because most creators do one video, maybe one piece of micro every so often, uh, but it's very hard for them. And they struggle with trying to understand how to really fully repurpose that content get their message out there and have a system around it. And so the Mastering Micro uh, course is going to go into everything from the editing side. You'll see behind the scenes and how me and my team work, but you'll also get um, real time strategies on how to do it, what's working right now on different platforms and industries and how you can do it. So we'll go through, look at what you have or how you can start leveraging uh, your pillar content and turn that into micro content. I'm actually um, thinking about going myself because micro content for me, it's it's a little bit of a challenge. And mm -hmm. and it's not because uh, I work full time. I'm in the sure. reserves as well. I have a seven year old. So I like to have time with him on the weekends. It's for him and my family. Gotcha. So I want to get uh, to know how to incorporate the small you know hours that I have. so I can just, you know, pack that content in there. So that's mm -hmm. that's my real struggle. Um, but, you know, it's it's not an unknown struggle for, for, for a lot of people anyways. It's probably 100%. a lot of people is going to the same thing. So 100%. And that, you know what, the things that I'm going to be sharing is the same way. It's like how you can create upwards of like 70 plus pieces of content. How much more you do at that point? It's more dedication to you, but it's like upwards of 70 Ooh. pieces of content solely out of a few videos. If you, what do you got? Podcasts, it doesn't matter what you're doing and mm -hmm. fully how to repurpose that content. And this is stuff that I develop when I still work the job full time. And dealing with, you know, a chronic disease. So not really having that much time to honestly work and get stuff done. So it's very possible. It's just about, again, systems and efficiencies okay. in the how you do it. So it's it's doable. Okay. And um, and I believe in doing a lot of stuff at the same time. Uh, I always tell the story. I was in Kuwait with the military mm -hmm. and I finished my master's degrees and I worked 16 hour days. And people think like, oh, wow, how you did that? It's like I slept for eight. I you know, did for 16 hours, I supposedly work. But in between those little breaks that I had, I studied my butt off. That's basically mm. what I did. So, yeah, it's uh, it's wow. doable. And people are afraid of, of, of doing things like that. And they shouldn't be afraid. Just embrace it. Embrace the 100%. Like I always say. <laughs> there you go. 100%. All right, Diana. Thank you very much. Um, go follow Diana on all her platforms and check out that. Um, that course, which is what's the name? The Mastering, Mastering Micro, Micro Content. Here we go. So I'm actually in the page right now. So yeah, but you'll see Mara. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Amazing. And Sai says, fantastic interview. Thank you very much. And all right. And this is all for today. But uh, next week, uh, we'll have a, a, a very good live stream. I'm still, I'm still in the planning process, planning probably the next uh, four months that we have. I just, you were the last one on the, in my four month period. So now I'm planning the next four months. So I'm very excited. Nice. Probably bring in uh, uh, one of your partners and see how that goes. So okay. I'm very happy that you're here and you uh, uh, gave us all that brilliant information. I'm 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 excited. I they're even making fun of me and on a separate chat, Cy <laughs> and, and Andy, because I never seen Elo with a colored shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey man, it's all good. I, Tell them when you're fresh, you're fresh. I know. <laughs> hey, they, they call me dirty fresh all the time. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. All right, Diana. Thank you very much. And thank you My guys pleasure. for being here. And um, you'll have a great day. Dr. Elo and Diana out.